lavish to the day that I die. Spring has thawed out the long bitter winter. The water is clear and the skies are blue. I'm standing in the middle of the Beaver Kill River. I might even catch and release one or two. Well, some folks like horses, cats or dogs. With a rod and a fly Yes, fishing is a favorite That's the time of mine If I couldn't do it I think I would cry Well, life is good When I'm wading a river it Gets even better When I cast a fly If I catch a trout It don't really matter It's fun just to be here And give it a try Hey folks, welcome to today's show. Been sitting here at the fly tying bench, starting to get ready on the next season of tying flies. And as always, I start my shows, my seasons out with some basic fly tying lessons. Um, I, my goal is to get you folks started in this wonderful hobby. Uh, you, you can't really fish right now unless you're ice fishing. And I may show some clips of uh, a recent ice fishing trip uh, later in the show but uh, this time in the winter you really want to be tying some flies and thinking about spring reading books about fishing and so on and so forth so um, again my name is Curtis Mayfly and this is Riffles and Waves this is show number three and you want to get your video uh, recorder whatever it is a hard disk recorder or DVD or whatever uh, get it started because I'm going to do a black woolly bugger today Okay, now first of all, when you get into fly time, you're going to find that uh, in the winter time your fingers get rough. I always keep a handy little nail file here to smoothen down some of those rough spots because they, they catch the, uh, the string, you know, the fly tying thread, and they make things difficult. So I always start by smoothing off some of those little burrs that you get in the winter time with your dry fingers. So. Uh, that's a nice little tip to know, okay? So I cleaned up my fingers. Now they're ready to go. Um, another thing I want to talk about here, and I'll get out my pheasant sword tail. Uh, when you look at a hook, and here's a giant hook. Uh, this is, by, for example, I don't tie flies on a hook this big. But along the top here is the shank. This is the shank. Here's the eye where you actually tie your leader to. Now this is a straight eye. There's also a turned down eye and a turned up eye. Uh, turned up eyes are used on salmon flies. Turned down f eyes are usually on a dry fly um, and nip flies and things like that. But basically this is your shank. This is the bend of the hook, the portion that bends. That makes sense. The gap is the diff 
distance between the hook and the shank. And then you have a barb. I bent the barb down because it was kind of sharp and uh, didn't want anybody to get hurt. Then you have your point. Okay, so there's the point. So when I tell you to tie your thread on, you start at the top here and then wind down the base to the bend. When I say wind on and go to the bend, that's what I mean. All right, so there's your basic hook. And here's a sword tail that we're not going to use. Uh, put that away. There we go. Find a place, everything in its place. Anyway, today we're going to do a black woolly bugger. Okay? This is a good basic fly. It teaches you how to tie some uh, difficult material like black marabou because you can't let go of it because it goes all over the place. It teaches you how to do the pinch method with tying the black marabou on and we're going to tie in some chenille. Where'd it go? I have some black chenille here. We're going to double this and, and wrap it over the body so it's a nice thick body. And then we're going to take uh, and wind some hackle. We're going to take a piece of this black here. This is a four pack, combo pack. We're going to take a black hackle and wrap it around the body, okay? And that gives it the motion in the water as it, it moves through the water. So this is the black woolly bugger and that's what we're going to tie right now all right so let's get started I have some black thread here somewhere oh here it is I'm, I have black thread today I'm going to use black thread on my bobbin okay and I have my black chenille here I'm going to clip off a piece of this with my scissors and again I'm holding my scissors in my hand on the third third finger so that the scissors are in my hand all the time okay I block the needle. Now I'm going to take one of my uh, uh, streamer hooks I'm going to take this here's hair's ear nymph out of there I'm going to put a streamer hook in my vise and clamp that down it's nice and tight as you can see okay so there's there's the our hook is in the vise. So now I'm going to take my thread, okay, and I'm going to reach over and pull towards me, okay, and then I'm going to wrap real quick forward and then back over itself. Now the thread is on the hook and I'm just going to wind real fast by keeping this tag end at a 45 degree angle. I can wrap fairly fast and keep it nice and tight and I don't have to really pay attention. Uh, I'm just going to wrap real quick and I'm going to cover that whole body because that's the base of the fly. Now a thing to note is if you're doing a um, deer hair type fly you don't want any thread on the hook because you want the deer hair to actually spin on that hook and you increase the amount that it spins by not having thread on the hook. So there we go. We're getting our thread all the way back to the bend and it may, it's, it's probably easier for you to see than it is for me because uh, I'm videotaping it and it's a little tricky. Okay, there we go. We're all the way back to the bend of the hook. Okay, now we're going to be wrapping our chenille over the body. Okay, so what I like to do is I like to take two tag ends and put them together. I take two tag ends of a piece so it's like a loop and I will take these tag ends and match and line them up and tie them on real quick just pinch and then you bring the thread up through now see the threads loose now I'm gonna bring it down and then I'm gonna pull up on the other side if you pull down it's gonna cause the material to spin around the hook and you don't want that you want to keep it right on top and by pinching it like that you can keep control over that material and that's that's all fly tying is is keeping control over the materials you're working with and manipulating them okay now I got a big hunk of black marabou here and I'm gonna take uh, a small hunk out of here and it looks like a lot but it's not really that much uh, and I'm gonna thin it out and get a nice little clump I'm going to match that. 
I want it about the length of the shank, okay? So I'm going to measure the length of the shank, is right there, pinch it, and then I'm going to trim some of this off. Okay, so I trimmed some of it off, and I got enough to tie it in there, okay? And so I'm going to do the pinch method again, bring the thread up through. See, it's loose, and then I'm going to bring it around the other side and pull up. By pulling up, it pulls the thread straight down, actually. When you pull up on this side, it pulls the thread straight down, and you get a nice tight uh, tie on there. going to build up a nice nice body there build up some thread or the end of that and some people will tie their marabou up the whole body to bulk the body up <coughs> now we need a piece of hackle and this will uh, we'll use a fairly long one here pull one out of my neck here and this isn't a super black this is a dyed neck it's it's got a nice color to it and on a fly like this, I like to tie the tip in, okay, the tip, tip of the hackle in, and then wrap it forward. So we're going to tie the tip in and wrap it forward. Okay, so we're going to bring this forward. Up to the head. Now it's simply a matter of uh, wrapping our chenille get some of this uh, marabou out of the way. We're going to wrap our chenille forward and some people will give it a twist uh, each time. You know, It's not necessary but it can help. But I'm going to wrap that forward, each wrap in front of the other wrap until I get up to the head like so and I'm going to wrap the head off. Now you can tie these with a cone on the front. You can add weight to these flies. Uh, it's a very good all around uh, streamer. And we trim some of that off. And now I'm going to wrap my hackle. For this I'm going to use some hackle pliers. Hackle pliers aren't necessary but it does help uh, with beginners who are trying to wrap hackle. Now this is what's called palmering. We're going to wrap this forward and actually leave a little space between each wrap and that makes it like a rib, a body, a ribbed body. And we're just going to wrap it leaving about sixteenth or more inches between each wrap. And there you go. We're going to wrap to the front. We're going to bring the thread around to tie that hackle off. Once we get a couple wraps, good tight wraps. Again, your bobbin allows you to control how tight tight that is. And we're going to cut this without cutting our thread, I hope. There we go. So now we have our hackle, we have our tail. And we're going to make a nice head there. Okay, now the other day I was talking about the whip finish knot tire, and I seem to have lost mine here. I might have put it away. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a real quick way of doing it. You take your two fingers, wrap the thread around, and go around the hook, go around twice, bring this loop over, and you're done. Two fingers, wrap around twice come over around the hook and that knot is a good knot that'll hold that. Now a lot of fly tires will use glue of various kinds. Um, I prefer Zap-A-Gap. I will use Zap-A-Gap and I will put a little drop on my bench. Okay, rather than try to use the applicator I will put a drop on my bench and then I will use a dubbing needle to 
I will use a dubbing needle to actually get some glue on it. So I got glue on there and I'm going to put it right where I want it. I have better control with the zap gap and that's going to glue that head and there you have it. You have a black woolly bugger and that's a pretty good streamer. It works in all kinds of conditions and for your first fly I'd like you to get a um, size 8 streamer hook three or four extra long get some black marabou some chenille black chenille and some black hackle and I want you to get your th black thread out and I want you to try to tie a couple of these flies this can also be done in olive you can just use an olive marabou instead of a black you can do use an olive chenille and you can use uh, various colors hackle you could use a grizzly on this to add a little more life to it but there you go folks that's the black woolly bugger now enjoy some of these clips from a uh, recent flight uh, ice fishing trip that I took it is January and there is ice out there's no sense wasting an opportunity to go fishing so take a look at this and we'll see you next week we're gonna do a hare's ear nymph alrighty so see you next week. I followed the uh, arrow on my GPS. I can find the hole I fished in last time. I'm right on location. I'm going to start drilling. And I caught 20 fish out of this, 20, 30 fish out of the same hole about a week ago. So I marked it on my GPS. And hopefully I'll be productive today. I have this bright light auger here. It started on the third pole. When you're drilling, it's important with a power auger to let it run for about a minute so it doesn't stall out. I'm on the spot of my GPS, so I'm going to start drilling, and in a couple minutes I'll be catching fish. Here we go. It's as easy as that. I'm filming today, so I have quite a bit of gear in my sled. Uh, I've got a shelter here in case we get cold, but it's a warm morning this morning. Uh, if the wind picks up, we'll be able to go in the shelter and avoid the wind. I have my pack shack here. I have uh, various rods and rod holders in here. I try and pack lights because uh, when you're going long distance, like we had to across this lake, the lighter gear you have, the less hot you get and the less tired you get. Right here I have a series of tip-ups. Uh, I have five tip-ups here, so that's what you can use in a lake in New York State. Um, just bearing types. I like the Arctic Fire ones. I have an Arctic Warrior. Different styles for different types of fishing. I like these plastic boxes here because they're easy to pack everything in and you can just bring them in and dry them out by the wood stove or heater at the end of the day. I have my Vexlar, like Sean has, so you can find your fish. Then, I'll, then I have an AquaView camera if I want to see what structure is down below the water or what type of structure or if there's a drop off or what is making the fish hit my lure. And now I'm going to set up some tip ups and hopefully within a couple minutes we'll be having flags go up. Set up my tip up here, and within a few minutes, we'll have a fish here. And on to the next hole. gonna check my tip up here a lot of the times whoop, got a flag a lot of the times these are light biting fish so they might, might not even set a tip up up but I got a fish on here Let's see what it is oh it's another perch here all right
Yeah, a little small. We got one big one. Ted's got oh, one. Oh, I got a fish here. It's that easy fishing with a Vexlar. Oh, it's pulling pretty hard here. Oh, oh I got a crappy. Check that out. All right. We got perch and crappy here. This is a good hole. Not big enough to keep though, is he? No. It's a nice small crappy, but hey, it's a oh, it's a lot better than uh, not catching anything. Lure goes down. You can watch it go down on the Vexlar. It's going down, going down, going down. About eight feet. Nine feet. It's at about ten feet. We're right in the middle of a big school of fish. Drop it down. If you look at the bottom at about thirteen feet, I'm stopping my lure here at about eleven feet. I'll slowly move it down to the fish so I won't spook them. Okay, at ten, I'm at eleven. Fish are at about twelve feet. Moving it down, moving it down, stop my line gonna move it right down to the fish and if you watch my tip I'm right in the middle of a pack of fish I'm just moving it very very light Move it up a little bit, release some lines so you can see my rod easier. Fish is coming right up to it. Almost on it. Oh, it's a big one. It's coming right at it. right in the middle of a school of fish. Oh, I got it! Nice one. That's a nice fish. Oh, I got a big fish on here. Must be in a, pa in a pack of crappies. Oh, this is pretty exciting. Move the uh, Vexlar out of the way. Oh, it's pulling hard. Nice fish. Oh, it's a nice perch. Here we go. It's coming up out of the hole. Oh. Oh. Was bigger than I thought, but they fight hard. Smaller anyway. than we thought. Yeah, smaller than I thought. Sorry, I'm a little bit excited. Look at that school of fish. And I'll move in, and you can see the big school of fish right about here where I'm pointing. And Kurtz is jigging his lure up and down. He's in the pack of fish here. This is the bottom here on the auto zoom. Here's the fish, and Kurtz's lure is just at the top of it. And on the right hand side, here's the surface. Here's the bottom, you can still see the fish. And this covers a whole water spectrum here. And on the left, it covers just the bottom five feet. And we are in a pack of fish here. Oh, Kurt's got one. Oh, he's taking line. I saw him and I felt the nibble, felt the nice nibble. Another fine little perch. Still a little too small to take home for uh, supper, but uh, nonetheless a nice fish. And we're out here to have fun catching fish, and it's not all about catching fish that you can keep, but you can see there's a nice little perch, and we caught him using the Vexlar. And you can even see him go down when he gets some... Uh... We're done fishing for the day. We use the GPS to find our holes. Did really well today. I, Kurt and Sean caught the most fish. I did a lot of filming. And we'll see you next time. The hills are alive with the sound of music. <laughs>